And welcome in to a special Thursday edition of the Backstage Pass. After a little time off, we're back at it here, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. And, of course, a new sponsor coming on next week. We'll talk more about that on Monday or Tuesday. Of course, if you're interested in joining our team, uh, the email contact is on the Facebook page or at the sportsguyspodcast.com. And always good to catch up with a show favorite. And this is the only show of the week. And I tell you what, I... I guess I did plan it that way. <laughs> Please to welcome in show favorite. He's got a parking spot here on the backstage pass again, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, a show favorite, Nashville recording artist, a new album coming out, Barstool Preacher, January 14th. My good buddy Jacob Bryant on the show. What's up, man? Man, living the dream, just trying <laughs> to make it, man. Everybody's trying to make it, right? Yeah, that's that's we're trying to make a dollar, baby. That's what we're trying to do. Keep keep food on our table for our families, no doubt. I just got back from uh Seeing my cards play in Arizona, which was a lot of fun there. Just taking some time off and getting back at these shows. Hey, let's talk a little sports at the top before we get to dive into uh, a little Barstool Preacher coming out January 14th. Excited about this album. Of course, every uh, album you put out, I get, I get excited about it and play it over and over again good 10, 15 times uh, before my wife says, cut that off. You've repeated it too much. Uh, <laughs> hey, let's talk a little World Series. Uh, I got to get your prediction here because I was a little bit worried after game one and even before the series started. Uh, Astros Braves, of course, 2021 World Series going on tied at one apiece as it goes back to Atlanta for the next three. Uh, hey, you guys came out strong, made a statement as a Braves fan, but at the same time, uh, we lost McCullers. Now, you guys have lost our former uh, ace and Charlie Morton. Um, what, what's your gut feeling say for game three? Game three could be the eventual winner of the series, right? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Yes, um, I do. I will say this. I have a bet going on with my buddy Randall King of Texas. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I bet him two hundred fifty dollars that the Braves going to take it all. So I'm still going to stick with it. <laughs> take it, the Braves. Gonna take it. Um, another buddy of mine is uh, AJ Mentor. He's the pitcher. You know, he's a relief relief pitcher in Atlanta, and uh, he has the greatest work ethic. And uh, I, I just think I really think that the Braves are the true underdog and they want it more. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think it's the Braves year. I think it's their time. Well, 88 wins during the regular season and they started to kind of turn it on after Acuna got hurt. And of course, uh, some other injuries. They seem, seem like they remade their outfield a couple of times over with Adam Duvall and Jock yeah. Peterson and uh, this guy named Eddie Rosario, National League Championship Series he, MVP. He, and uh, he this there too. <laughs> He sure did. He came out of nowhere, which was uh, pretty cool. And it's kind of cool because this has been a rivalry. I go back to like when Houston was in the National League in the Central Division, and I'm like in my teens there, 97, 98, 99. And I'm like, we just battled Houston, Atlanta, and all those division series until we finally, people say, broke the curse like in 04 when Chris Burke uh, hit the home run too as well. But it just it just feels good to have a couple of old rivals kind of meet up, which, which were, that was that National League Central, National League East, and – until Houston switched over to the American League, which has definitely you know worked out for them. Uh, this is pretty cool to have. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, Houston kind of expected to be there. Atlanta came from out of nowhere to 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 beat the Dodgers in that National League uh, Championship Series. So this is definitely. Uh, I, I got to go in seven. I had predicted. Uh, I, well, I'll take that back. I'll say six. I had predicted Braves in six. My early prediction. People that know me, but. At the same time, now it could go either way because uh, yeah. of the injuries that have, have been sustained by each pitching yeah. staff. So, yeah, I think it, I think it's going to be Braves and seven. Um, mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't think that losing Charlie is going to push the Braves out. I think it'll give us more of a want to. Um, but once again, I'm biased. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a North, North Georgia boy and. I'm <laughs> I'm also a Texas guy, you know, like I, all my buddies and music are from Texas and everything else. So like you couldn't have a better matchup for a world series, in my opinion, to have the Houston Astros and the Braves doing this. It, it's going to be ex extremely exciting for any baseball fan and anybody that likes to fire up their rec tech grill and, and, <laughs> and get their, uh, get their grill on for sure. Well, I tell you, this ought to be a fun series, no doubt, and definitely, I'm, I'm with you. Definitely looks like it's going to go seven games, and it's going to be those unsung heroes that kind of step up now, whether it be a battle of the bullpens and whoever has, I guess, the the pitching and the arms don't fall off toward the end of it, too, and can collect, uh, like I said, starting pitching even. Uh, like I said, position players look pretty good out there, too, at the same time, and this is a pretty cool even keel uh, matchup, so we'll kind of see what happens there. Hey, tell me what's been going on since, uh, I guess, all the, the craziness it seems to – have kind of died down a little bit now. You know, artists are still out there doing their thing and kind of doing their shows and and uh, you're staying busy. I know for you guys, 
you just got back from Texas and a little tour down here. Tell me about that and the response uh, from the fans. Yeah, man, it's uh, we were worried there for a minute. I ain't gonna lie to you, um, but we went from you know 140 or so shows a year to to 12 because, yep. because of COVID, and uh, it's finally opening back up. Thank God, and uh, and we're we're getting out there, and everybody's vaxxed and maxed and all that stuff and we're, we're just trying to we're just trying to get back to some kind of normalcy you know i mean we're we're just trying to live life and get back to normal man that's all mm-hmm. we're to do. and that live performance ought to feel good like you said just getting back out there stepping on stage and having the fans you know buy the tickets come to the show and let, let a little steam off too because we all work hard and every career and every job we do especially the frontline workers out there we thank them for what they do out there to you know, keep, keep us healthy here in America too. And, and definitely, you know, I'm not one to, I don't talk politics on the show so people can get the vaccine or no vaccine. Just take care of yourself out there and, and do the things that the CDC recommends. And I will say this, I've been to a few live shows. It's just been fun. Like I said, seeing the fans back out there again and uh, singing the songs and, and, and for you guys, uh, y'all hit on something, you know, this year that was, I thought one of the best albums of country music y'all put out there. Uh, we talked about this last time you came on the practice, what I preached deluxe edition, which is out there, across all the digital platforms. Of course, my favorite was 25 in Jail. I thought it was one of the best songs out there. Hey, tell me about that, the response from the fans, uh, how, how great that did. Y'all released one album there. Then you had the Deluxe uh, come out here in 2021. Seemed like the fans you know, gravitated to the music, and, and it meant a lot to them to, to have an album like that, right? Yeah, I mean, 25 in Jail, going back to that, I wrote that with a buddy of mine, Daniel Lee. Um, he's also a a big Georgia guy and, and a lot of people locally know who he is. And I I was super happy to even have him write a song with me, but, uh, we, he came to the house one night and we were sitting around trying to write a song and we couldn't come up with nothing. And I got to thinking about a buddy of mine that talked about, you know, I didn't turn 21 in prison. I turned 25 in jail. And, uh, (laughs) and, and, and he was like, well, there's our song right there. You know, we wrote that thing. I swear to you as God is my witness, we wrote that song in probably five minutes is mm-hmm. the song is about how long it took us to write it. And it, <laughs> it just, kinda, it just kind of fell out there, you know, and, and it's became a really good song for us live and people like it. Cause it's got a little, you know, drunk banter to it. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was cool. And releasing the deluxe, <clears throat> the reason behind that was we ended up signing a deal with a uh, universal UK um, they have, they have a record label that's under the universal records umbrella called snake farm records. And in the mm-hmm. UK, they release everything under that snake farm umbrella and they wanted to re-release pour whiskey on my grave mm-hmm. over, over in the UK. And we released it and it went number one for like eight weeks on uh, major market radio over there. So that, that was really cool. Um, so we're, uber excited about that for sure but we just ended up signing another deal in the u.s with 30 tigers who luke combs started with and Mm -hmm. they got uh tyler childers sturgill simpson brent cobb blackberry smoke uh toby keith um jason isabel uh wheeler walker jr i mean a, a bunch of a bunch of people that that were super excited to be in the same camp as for sure and david and see us over there and zach and a lot of those guys are just absolutely incredible and i'm excited to call that my home well congratulations on that record deal because uh, well well deserved no doubt uh you've been busting your ass out there and it's, it's showing in the tunes and of course the shows and uh definitely you know one of my favorites i tell you another great song off of there was best part of me is you i thought that really kind of uh, continued the flow uh, of the album. Tell me about this one and kind of uh, definitely how it continued to uh, resonate with a lot of your fans out there. Yeah. Best part was wrote about my wife. Um, she, I, I know I, you've probably heard this a million times, but she, <clears throat> she literally saved my life. And I don't mean that <clears throat> um, metaphorically. She physically mm-hmm. saved my life when I was going through um, some addiction issues and, and some other things and, and she resuscitated me, um, when I wasn't breathing. So that, Mm -hmm. that, uh, that was a point in my life where I had to realize, you know, like, look, man, you, you gotta slow down, you gotta figure this stuff out and whatever. And and she's helped me tremendously and having our daughter and our son, it's, uh, it's, it's really weird to even think about the man I was 
you know, six years ago versus now, because I, I can't even imagine going there now, but, um, uh, it's, uh, I, that, that song is for her. That, that song was written for her. Yeah. I, I kind of got the feel of that one too, which I love so much about it. And I tell you what, what changed in my life was 18 months ago, I had my first, my little girl. And I tell you, being a dad is like you said, a whole different ordeal. They don't come with manuals at all. They <laughs> sign up. You just got to dive in, get your hands dirty. But I tell you, we just took her out to Arizona for the first, uh, uh, football game. She had a little Kyler Murray jersey on. I got to hold her and I'll, oh. I'll send you some, uh, pictures, but man, she just, uh, the, the, the biggest part of us keeping us busy. And there's those first, uh, six to eight months, as you know, you don't get much sleep and you try to catch up, uh, even, even now she still has some nightmares here and there, but I tell you, man, to hold her to, to kind of see that too, as well. And to see that song, uh, even resonate with me, just a congratulations to you and your wife for, for the kiddos and, uh, for her to be able to, uh, be that just huge inspiration to turn everything around to it. And I guess I see it from a different lens now. Uh, being a father, it definitely uh, brings out the best in a man. It really does. You know? Yeah, I mean, being a daughter, dad, too. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that you should be any different with a son, but my my daughter, you know, when she wakes up every morning, and comes downstairs, and she yells, "Daddy," you know, and then <laughs> she looks up at me like I am Superman. You know, uh -huh. yeah. and, and my goal is to make her think that I am Superman. You know. <laughs> So I have to be a better man every day for her, you know, and that's, that's awesome. So congratulations on yours as well. I tell you, brother, it's been a long road for us too. And definitely just, just getting there is, is half the battle. And now just seeing her grow up right before our eyes, 19 months next week, it just uh, flew by like it was yesterday. She was born. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, man preaching and, and practicing, I love practice what I preached there, which was the title track of that uh, deluxe and the album you had too. Um, Man, I just thought another good message sent out there to fans and also just one of those songs that people, you know, could kind of pick up and go, yeah, I mean, this is kind of sports related. This is music related. Uh, we're going to practice what we preach. What was the backstory behind that one? That one is, I mean, I kind of don't talk about it a whole lot, but I, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I was called to preach in some way, shape or form when I was 13 years old. And I don't really know exactly what I was supposed to do. You know, like I, I did, I don't want to be a preacher, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm meant to do country music, but mm -hmm. I've read the Bible and I know a decent amount about the Bible. And I read a scripture one time that said, we're two or more gathered in his name. That is church. Mm -hmm. So when I sing a song, like practice what I preach or, you know, the new record that we're going to be putting out called barstool preacher or whatever, or sing a song like sometimes I pray you can go to church right there in a bar is the way I look at it. And some of the people who may or may not know God or, or have a relationship with God will have an opportunity to know God because I'm putting it out there, right there in a bar, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I'm putting myself out there a little bit by doing that because sometimes when people in a bar, they don't want to hear that. They just want to get drunk and have a good <laughs> But at the same time, it's, you know, even if it's just for a split second that they understand who Jesus is, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm doing it for. You know, I, I, I believe that that's the calling on my heart and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's why this new record is called Barstool Preacher. Yeah, let's dive more into it, too, because I always talk about, you know, the best work is always the work that's put out there, you know, right right in front of us. And, of course, all the great works of the past, you know, kind of carry over a little bit. And you take a little bit from each album to try to just perfect it and perfect the sound and the quality of music that goes on there, too, which is fantastic work, everything you've done. Uh, but Barstool Preacher, we were talking a little bit before the show, uh, some of your best work out there. You're excited to get this out January 14th of next year. And I was already listening to some of the the pre-tracks it's pre-ordered available now comes out January 14th. Uh, can't say no to you baptized by the river, uh, good old boy, devil in an old six string. Uh, tell me about this and a lot of great writers on this too. Yeah. Uh, some of the guys I mentioned before, uh, the, the new single, Joel Shumag, Jamie Grooms, my uncle diamond, his name's David Lawson, his real name, but everybody knows him as diamond. He's kind of a, uh, Appalachian legend up here. <laughs> old moonshiner but uh but yeah he uh he kind of gave me a little bit of influence you know of of living living a lifestyle and and i kind of looked up to it and i went through you know going through wanting to be i guess 
not necessarily harder than I should be, but, but, uh, just kind of living harder than I should. And, mm -hmm. and I went through the kind of fighting the, all right, I should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Should, and, and I realized one day, you know what? If I make it into heaven on a broken wing, it ain't going to be nothing but just devil in an old six string. And I had that in my head. And, uh, Jamie and I and, and Diamond, my uncle, we, we wrote that song on my front porch before I moved out of my, my little single wide I grew up in over there. <laughs> Um, that that one turned out really cool and it, it was the label's favorite song and we, we didn't think it would be a, a single at all you know mm -hmm. we thought it was going to be an album track but they thought it would do something and that's that's what they decided to put out so we, so we would let them put it out <laughs> that's good stuff no doubt and then can't say no to you I was listening to that a little bit kind of that up tempo feel uh, even today again that uh, comes out January 14th Barstool Preacher from Jacob Bryant uh, tell me about that one for Can't Say No to You, because that's another one that uh, gets the feeling, of course, out there right now. I know there's other great titles you were telling me. Can't wait to hear everything else on there. But uh, for what's out there available for pre-order, it definitely uh, whets the appetite. So does that one, right? Yeah, Can't Say No is uh, another one for my <laughs> wife, pretty much. You know, I mean, she she opened, opened the door, I guess, for me to have, uh, one, a prosperous life, and two, just a happy life. Um, that there, there's been so many things that I could brag on her, you know, for that have came into my life just because of things that she did, you know, and we were writing a song one day with my buddy, uh, Wyatt McCubbin and Carson Chamberlain. And we was talking about, you know, like she, you just can't say no to her. You know, she's mm -hmm. just a good chick and she means well and everything about it, you know? So we, we, we went into the, you know, them, them green eyes and this, that, whatever <laughs> it, 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 it just, uh, it turned into what it is now from just an idea, I guess, of just having an extremely good woman in your corner mm -hmm. and, it, and it takes a damn good woman to make a damn good man. Uh, it's the honest God's honest truth right there too. As well, I had to talk her into going to Arizona too, no doubt. And she goes, well, I'm a cowboy fan. I said, well, I got to go see my team. Plus we had free tickets out there and free parking. So it takes a good woman to make a good man to, to travel with you out there to watch your favorite football team. So nothing wrong uh, oh, with yeah. that too, as well. Uh, we're going to take a little quick time out again. Jacob Bryan here on the backstage pass presented by Bangtail whiskey. We'll come back. We're going to talk about a little UK rock remix on the album barstool picture. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, time as we talk about good old boy coming back here with Jacob quick time out. We'll come back in 30. Hang tight. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And I tell you what, Thursday night football, Packers, Cardinals, NFL Network. Uh, let's have a glass of that bangtail whiskey here on the backstage pass. Sounds good to me. I know Jacob's out there with a number of different selections, right? <laughs> well, it's funny to bring up Bangtail. Uh, the owner of that company is is a guy that I met. Uh, we were playing a show with Tyler Farr. Mm -hmm. and brought that out, and it used to be called Stockyard Whiskey, right? I believe, yeah, I believe he did. Yeah, you're talking about Brandon Bing, the great owner of Bangtail Whiskey? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this. I didn't even know he was a sponsor of yours, but I'll say this unpaid on un whatever that's <laughs> the best dude you'll ever meet in your entire life he's such a good dude and and i don't i don't drink liquor anymore so i can't say the liquor's good but <laughs> as far as the owner he's an incredible dude love brandon love him no doubt about it too and like i said you can get your bottle the easy liquor app or easyliquor.com and of course check out uh, bangtail.com for the merchandise and everything out there too stay in stay in busy no doubt fantastic guy we love him here on the show and he also is a sponsor of the justin moore podcast out there bangtail whiskey we appreciate the support there hey let's talk about the rock remix this uk rock remix which is on the album uh track seven good old boy which is out there on the album that comes out january 14th barstool 
preacher from Jacob Bryant. Uh, the idea behind it, because I thought it was uh, definitely something different, and you don't really hear a lot of all records today with the rock remix and Good Old Boy, but tell me about this one. Yeah, Good Old Boy was meant to be exactly what it sounds like. I mean, it's it's saying, you know, sometimes it's hard to be a good old boy these days. You know, I, I grew up in North Georgia where you held the door open for a young lady or elder lady or an elder man walking in the door, you know, and nowadays you hold the door up for somebody and they don't even say thank you when they want to do it. You know? I just, uh, I don't know, quite frankly, I got a little pissed off one day when I when held the door open for this fella and he, he walked through and didn't say nothing, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I had it in my mind that I was going to write a song that said something like when you hold the door, you don't even get a thanks. I guess a good old boy is too hard to be these days or whatever. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that came from uh, i wrote that with joel shoemake and uh brett beavers actually dirks bentley's producer for okay. early, early stuff but it uh it's, it's it's a pretty cool tune and and we had already released it and uh it it was not necessarily super well received here but in the uk with that universal thing they thought it was great you know it was a, mm -hmm. it was a thing so they they re-released it over there and, and it's doing really well I know there's some some ones that are the grayed out now, but I, I want to talk about uh, some of those. Was there kind of a favorite song that uh, for you kind of set this record apart? Because it seems like everything, like you said, some of your best work you're putting out there coming up to start the first of the year. And uh, we're already getting a pre-taste of those five tracks that I talked about there. But at the same time, was there kind of a fun part of this record that was a little bit different from uh, the others that you put out? Are you talking about the one we're about to put out? or uh, Yeah, the one you're about to put out for, for uh, Barstool Preacher. Was there kind of a favorite uh, song that meant, meant more to you than maybe some of the other ones, or was there maybe some challenges in making this one, considering how, how personal this one is? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, yes and yes. There, there was some challenges due to the fact of COVID and, mm -hmm. you know, getting the studio guys and, and all that. But as far as a favorite song, I guess my favorite song on the entire record is called buzzards um, <laughs> it, uh, I, i'd never heard the word buzzard in a song ever and uh my buddy wyatt that i wrote heartbeat and up from the bottom and a lot of songs that are on this record with um he played me this song one night at a writer's retreat and i had to have it had to have it <laughs> and i pretty pretty much had to beg him to let me cut it because he was gonna cut it so but uh it, it turned out it turned out really really cool and and i'm super excited to have people here yeah he's he's a show favorite for me i tell you when he came on just a super talented guy that he is uh speaking of white mccubbin there he came on just was the musical knowledge and the the writer he is fantastic guy a lot of ideas and a lot of phrases and key words and things like that to come together and that's the, the beauty about Nashville, so many great writers and so many people, like you said, that come in a co-write that you can, you know, share ideas with and uh, put two heads together. That's the pretty cool thing about Nashville. So many uh, great, talented people you got to work with this record on. But Wyatt McCubbin, he's done some stuff with Josh Ward and so many great uh, Texas musicians out there and so many great uh, Nashville recording artists like yourself. You can't say enough about Wyatt, right? He's, he, I've already told everybody, Wyatt McCubbin is my Dean Dillon, like Dean <laughs> Dillon does it short straight. He, he, he's probably written more songs than I'm going to cut than, than I'll ever realize. But yeah, I, I can't give him enough props. Him, between him, Jamie Grooms, and Joel Shoemake, I mean, I, uh, th them three boys is family to me. Um, <laughs> that they, they're, they're all incredible songwriters, but they're also incredible human beings. And I, I don't, I don't, I don't look at music like business all the time. You know, I, I mm -hmm. look at, you need to surround yourself with family and, and all, all three of them boys is family. Uh, I tell you what, they're just uh, great talented musicians, no doubt. And I tell you that last one you put on uh, the album Barstool Preacher, which comes out again, January 14th across all the digital platforms was uh, amen. So taking us back a little bit, no doubt for uh, a lot of the lyrics you could kind of feel in that too. That's one of the uh, available pre-order tracks. Now tell me about amen. Yeah, amen. I didn't write that one. Um, wish I did. Uh, buddy <laughs> mine, Adlicek, he's actually from Texas. Okay, uh, yeah. He he was opening up a show for us. I, I can't remember the town, so I apologize about that. But we were playing somewhere <laughs> in Texas. Uh, <laughs> and he was opening, and they were sound checking, and that's the song that he chose to play during sound check. And I looked over at my guitar player, and I was like, yep, that's another time where I, I wrecked to hear a song from <laughs> 
and that's my song, but it needs to be my song. So, you know, after the show, I asked him, I was like, does anybody cut that other than you? And he said, no. And, uh, anyway, long story short, we became friends and, and he ended up letting me cut that tune and he actually played piano on it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So it's me and Ben on the, uh, on the record version. Um, so it's, it's, it's really cool, man. I, I love that song. And that was another time where I felt like God was telling me to do something. So I was just following and what he, what he was telling me to do and, and, uh, going off his word you know yeah another super texas guy we've had here on the show and a good friend of the show ben Kadlicek. if you hadn't checked out his music you need to go check out uh, uh ben's music fantastic writer so there's the wisdom and the breakdown we get from songs here on the uh, backstage pass which i love we, it because everything we, crosses over yeah we, we got some new stuff possibly coming too me and, <laughs> me and ben are going to work on some stuff uh all right Ben had mentioned about recording, you know, some uh, some newer stuff, and I think I may produce a couple tracks on him and and, and uh, put a little JB stank on them. <laughs> you know, every album's going to have a little JB stank on there, no doubt about it. Too, it's it's like uh, I guess the wounded uh, the wounded rotations we talked about at the beginning of it between the Astros and Braves for this World Series. The the bullpen is the stank. Whatever bullpen steps up, it's going with this. <laughs> Thing right there, but every album you've done, you've got to have a little bit of that uh, of that stank on there too. Again, it's uh, Barstool Preacher, January fourteenth. Pre order now across the platforms or check out uh, Jacob Bryant Music uh, dot com. All right, hey, let's jump into a little rapid fire. I've changed a few things here, but this is always fun uh, to get to do this too, no doubt. Uh, any good TV shows you've caught up uh, lately over the last a few weeks? I, I'm a, I'm a Yellowstone guy. I'll go back and watch it over and over. It's just one of my favorites. One of my buddies, Emerson Miller was the, uh, lead photographer on that show. And I just, I go back and forth between watching it and that. And, uh, I guess if I wasn't watching that, it'd probably be some kind of crime something. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what I got into and I shouldn't say got into it's just always fun to do it I know this time of year is Halloween and I'm dressing up the kid for the first uh, part of the weekend coming up here for the trick-or-treat or pumpkin patch or whatever we take her to the the new uh, Halloween kills with Jamie Lee Curtis the one that just came out it was actually uh it was actually pretty good it came out October 15th Did you get a chance to check that out I have not seen that one yet Okay, well, I'm, I'm just telling you, for one <laughs> horror movie fan to many out there, Halloween Kills is you can stream it on the Peacock Network, and it's it's worth uh, giving a couple of hour hour forty five minutes if you if you want to stream that one too. And then uh, there's always kind of some fun stuff going on there, Halloween, the spooky stuff. And let me ask you about that uh, uh, trick or treat coming up. Any plans to take the kids? Uh, I guess trick or treating this weekend. Yeah, we have uh, my uncle Diamond actually, the guy I wrote. A, a decent amount of songs with he's having a little Halloween party. So we, we're going to go over there and uh, fellowship. <laughs> what are the, what are the kids going to be for Halloween? Um, my daughter will probably be Rapunzel. She likes tank. <laughs> my son, he's only five months old, but he, we call him big hoss. He, big he's hoss. Our same size diapers as my, my daughter whatever but i think we're just gonna dress him up as a frog i didn't know what else to do. <laughs> we got her we got her what do we do oh an elmo costume she loves sesame street and we got her a uh that disney cartoon it's got those australian shepherds and dogs that one called bluey which she loves out there the music to dance to so we get to get her chance to hold them up side by side okay chloe which one you want and she'll <laughs> grab a bag and there there you go for the weekend what you're going to wear uh, coming up. All right. If you could be on any game show, what, uh, what's Jacob Bryant going to be a contestant on game show? Probably the price is right. Okay. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I'm Drew Carey, to... Jacob Bryant. And let's, let's go rock. Uh, let, let's do it. I like that. <laughs> For the price is right, no doubt. I'd love to see that too. And like you said, come on down and you could place the bid on that product and get right into the showcase showdown, right? There you go. It's good out there too. All right, uh, favorite food. What have you been into lately? Uh, favorite food would either be chicken parm or sushi. Okay. I know you were that sushi guy too. Like I said, I, I got a chance to went out to Arizona this past weekend. And uh, even before that too, there was actually a good sushi place. There actually a couple of them near Scottsdale. So if you ever get out to Arizona, I gotta, I gotta be sure and send you a message on that uh, name of that place. I can't think of it right offhand, but had a good couple of uh, sushi restaurants and, and thought about you out there too. When I was in Arizona this past summer and uh, 
last weekend. So I'll be sure and get those over to you if you're ever touring out there, doing some shows out there. All right, let's talk about uh, favorite drink. I know, like I said, when it comes to non-alcoholic beverages, if it's one of those, I got to get a Kickstarter or maybe it's an energy drink or a soda or something like that. What do you enjoy kind of sipping on? <laughs> that answers that question right there. We're, we're all good. I say alcoholic or non-alcoholic. He's a Miller guy, no doubt. Miller life. <laughs> Miller life. Always. Always. All right. Uh, dream destination vacation. Uh, no music involved. Where you? Where you where taking the family to? Where are you going? Um, believe it or not, me and the wife, we we. I was like anti going to Mexico because I was just kind of scared of leaving the country or whatever. But we went to Cancun to a place called Dreams Vista, and mm-hmm. it was absolutely awesome so if i had to go back anywhere right now at least outside of the country i'd go back to uh, dream vista cancun <laughs> hey you know what been down there to riviera maya and to some great places in mexico and that's one of the best uh, vacation spots and like you said cancun is you can never go wrong with with that too and i'll tell you man for me it's it's going to be a little the bahamas which i did before but can't wait to hopefully do again and there was something about the west side of canada man i enjoyed alberta and going up there, too, to Jasper National Park and some of the different uh, sights and sounds up there. So it's pretty cool to see uh, different sides of Canada that I got a chance to see up there. Rocky Mountains and all that great stuff up right. on, on on the West Coast. So that's one, one of mine out there, too. Well, I'll tell you what's out there is uh, Barstool Preacher uh, coming up January 14th. And uh, uh, pre-order now. You get uh, some great tracks, no doubt. Many of we we talked about today. And Brother, I know you got... Uh, a busy schedule, but I always appreciate you making time for us. Uh, I tell you, this is going to be a fun three-game series in, in the World Series over the next three in Atlanta. And uh, definitely uh, both teams evenly matched. So this is going to be a lot of fun, right? Absolutely. I, I, like I said, I think it's the Braves. I think it's the Braves. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? I picked them in six, so I'm kind of right there with you when it comes. People call me a turncoat, but I'm like, no. Yeah, I want to see my team win, but – Atlanta in in six or seven right now. I just I just, something is a team of destiny, and they, like you said, they hadn't done it since '95, hadn't been in it since '99. So this is this is one of those things that it, it, uh, our time. It's our time. It's our <laughs> it's our time. Well, brother, appreciate you again. Barstool Preacher, January fourteenth, and of course, uh, check him out at JacobBryantMusic.com. My friend, always appreciate the time and you uh, dropping us a line. We get a chance to talk, and looking forward to. Uh, uh, catching up later down the line. Good luck to you and Ben on the new project. And my friend, always uh, feel free to check in with us anytime. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. You got it, man. It's Jacob Bryan here on the Backstage Pass. No shows tomorrow. We'll catch you guys next week presented by Bangtail Whiskey. Y'all have a great weekend. See you soon.